This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman, with Nermeen Sheikh. As closed-door negotiations continue at the U.N. Climate Summit in Glasgow, climate justice activists are taking to the streets outside the COP, demanding the United States and other large polluters agree to drastic cuts in carbon emissions to save the world from a climate catastrophe. On Wednesday, police arrested at least five people as hundreds of Extinction Rebellion members held a protest against corporate greenwashing at the COP. We turn now to one of the most prominent climate lawyers in Britain, who has been deeply involved in international climate negotiations for decades, but is also engaged in direct action to affect change. Farhana Yasmin, uh, Farhana Yamin is in Glasgow, where she's working with the Climate Vulnerable Forum, a group that represents 48 of the countries most threatened by the climate crisis. We last spoke with her in 2019, after she was arrested for super-gluing her hands to the ground outside Shell's headquarters in London as part of an Extinction Rebellion action. Stop lobbying government to delay action. Please prove to me that the legal process is pretty broken right now, and we're having to break law rather than make law because of the inaction of 30 years now of these companies. That was Farhana Yamin in 2019. She's joining us now in front of the rotating globe suspended over the UN Climate Assembly in Glasgow, Scotland. Welcome back to Democracy Now!, Farhana. It's great to have you with us as we watched you uh, in that action. Talk about what it means to be out on the streets, super gluing yourself, protesting the fossil fuel giant shell, and then being inside. You're passing, I assume, many many of those same fossil fuel lobbyists, but your two-pronged approach, inside and outside, as you help to negotiate the Paris Climate Agreement. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me back. Um, I really salute all those who are taking the actions in the streets and uh, demanding real accountability, demanding climate justice. Climate justice, you know, my nerdy legal self, uh, is actually in the Paris Agreement. It's a paragraph here in the preamble. We're trying to make good on that uh, preambular paragraph, and we're trying to hold, you know, corporations and countries to account. Uh, the net zero emissions goal, which was a very important goal, is not just greenwash. It has to be made good. It has to have emissions that are real, and those emissions cannot be bought at the expense of vulnerable people and, and, and countries, in effect, displacing uh, emissions, and they must have strong accountability for their actions, which must result in actual changes, not just, as I said, greenwashing and buying offsets from others. Farhana, as we mentioned, uh, Extinction Rebellion uh members, Extinction uh, Rebellion members have been protesting against corporate greenwashing at the COP. Could you explain what historically the role of corporations has been in these uh, climate uh, conferences and uh, the fact that some of the largest oil, gas and coal producers have yet to outline uh, how they intend to, to decrease fossil fuel use? Well, the, the, the role historically of the large oil and gas uh, companies has been to lobby countries to delay action, to stop the science being acted on. And that's what's happened for 30 years. And the frustration that I had, you know, back in 2019 was to see how well organized, how well funded, how well orchestrated that lobbying, marketing, uh, behind the scenes manipulation was that has resulted in the delays here. So I'm very happy that groups like Extinction Rebellion and many others are now outing these companies and we are learning more and more through investigative journalism of the role that has been played in stymieing action by these companies. So I really welcome you know, a torch being shone on their very clever uh, orchestration. And it's time also that you know, uh, advertising companies, the Edelmans of the world, the, the PR marketing and other professions that are aiding and abetting this uh, ob obstruction, it's time that they realize that those uh, uh, delays that have resulted have also uh, resulted from their own actions. You know, you cannot now accept clients who are basically putting the earth at p in peril. 
uh, as clients and still say that you support sustainability? Well, in uh, uh, August, uh, the IPCC report uh, was quite uh, uh, staggering uh, in its uh, warnings about what uh, the world will face if extremely swift and large-scale actions are not needed. Uh, the UN uh, Secretary General called this a code red, uh, called the report code red for humanity. You've attended 23 uh, of the 25 uh, uh, COPs. What have you seen change uh, as the urgency of the situation has so manifestly uh, grown? Yeah, it's 24 out of 26, but What's changed for me is actually a huge amount of energy, a huge appetite for uh, change and a demand for action coming from our young people, from our indigenous people, from women, from uh, our trade union, from workers from around the world. Uh, and, and that is being stymied, is being stopped and is not coming into uh, the energy that's needed in this room. I stress the word energy because today's energy day and the energy that we need is political energy because it's really the politicians who are behind uh, the science, the politicians are listening and in the pockets sometimes of uh, the, the vested interests that I spoke about from the fossil fuel industry to large agribusiness. Uh, and I think that that's what has shifted here is that realization that we have to act together and these corporations, those who are most powerful, especially the G20 countries, they have to act and they cannot hide behind uh, any more excuses. Farhana Yameen, in 2015, you helped negotiate that landmark Paris Agreement. Um, president Biden, when he was at COP this week, apologized for the previous president, Trump, pulling the U.S. out of the Paris Climate Agreement. What message do you have now for the U.S. Congress, where you see this major um, division within the Democratic Party, let alone the Republicans, um, around the issue of a Green New Deal and providing enough money to um, transition the U.S. off of fossil fuels. What message do you have for them right now uh, among those Senator Manchin, who is the largest oil, gas and coal recipient of campaign funds in the U.S. Congress, who has almost single-handedly stopped um, the climate accord in Congress from moving forward? Well, we can only appeal to all of those in Congress, including uh, the senator who uh, must listen to his conscience, must not only put his constituents' uh, 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 short-term interests, but listen uh, very much to the, to the hearts and pleas of all of those who are gathered here and help the U.S. retain its credibility. We know that the U.S. wants to do the right thing, but we would like the U.S. government to be more joined up here and to deliver on the financial uh, pledges and to deliver on action uh, at home. And the U.S. is an incredible leader and it needs to regain the trust and, and, and work as an ally with others. So I appeal to his constituents directly to please, uh, you know, uh, lobby him instead of him being lobbied by the fossil fuel industries and receiving this money. I would urge all of those uh, citizens in the rest of the U.S. to pile in uh, and put the pressure on, because it really matters. The U.S. really matters, and its delivery on its promises, its pledges, really matter here. And Farhana Yameen, finally, uh, before we conclude, talk about the work that you're doing with the uh, Climate Vulnerable Forum. We were just speaking to former Maldives President uh, uh, Nasheed, uh, and the Maldives were, was, of course, one of the founding members. Uh, could you explain the work that you're doing with this group? Well, we've um, been working to get the whole of this conference to ex adopt a climate, climate emergency pact framing that delivers on uh, an annual year-by-year -year ambition cycle instead of the five-year cycle that we had in Paris to deliver on the 500 billion, which is the total sum if you add up uh, what was owed from 2020 to 2024. Uh, we want the money to go to adaptation, which is basically a Cinderella still, and for the money 
to go 50-50 to mitigation and adaptation and lastly to also fund uh, uh, and recognize the harm that's already happening and again uh, to fulfill the promise of article 8 here on loss and damage so the earth is you know requiring us to repair the harm done and we would like this conference to acknowledge that harm is happening and to fund and support uh, the, 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 the pillars of the Paris Agreement that are about loss and damage. Rahani Amin, we want to thank you for being with us, international environmental lawyer who helped write the landmark 2015 Paris Agreement. Next up, we remain in Glasgow and speak with Harjit Singh of the Climate Action Network, who's helping to lead a campaign for a fossil fuel non-proliferation treaty. Stay with us.